Hello and welcome to my channel, Becoming Bev. In today's video, we're gonna talk about those do-it-yourself crafting projects that I've done in the van. Now, typically when people talk about do-it-yourself projects in the van, they're building cabinets and bed platforms and all that. I leave that kind of stuff up to Larry from Rambling Man Conversions, and occasionally I'll drop the van off at Griffin Automotive in Bonterre, Missouri. So these are my do-it-yourself projects for the van. If you watched my last video, you know that last month I went through what I was calling a wild roller coaster ride. Identity theft, my mom had COVID, and also a tornado hit my little hometown, Fredericktown, Missouri. I often say that life occurs between your ears. And what I mean by that is something happens and you get to choose how you want to look at it or how you want to feel about it. And all three of those things can be very upsetting. And I'm not saying don't feel your feelings because I think it's important to feel your feelings. I think that when we stuff things down and pretend like it's okay when it's not okay, they end up exploding at some point anyway. One of my viewers commented something like, look how blessed you are. Your mom is recovered from COVID even with all of those underlying issues. Your campground was completely spared from this tornado. In the end, they really didn't get anything, you know, with the identity theft other than, you know, some charges on a credit card. So when you reframe it like that, I am blessed. When life dishes out something, if you can, um, you know, once you process the emotions to get on the other side of it, find another way to look at it and find the blessings and be in gratitude. One of the high points of my roller coaster ride last month is um, a friend of mine sent me a, a song by Ian Fisher called Be Thankful. And I'll put a link to that song in this video description, but I've been starting every morning off in my van with the song Be Thankful. I think that gratitude is important. Like here's an example. I read this recently and I thought about it. You know, occasionally if you're running late for something and you, you know, scurry up there and you're like, I'm so sorry I was late. And what this article suggested was instead of saying, I'm sorry I was late, to change it to thank you so much for waiting for me. And just see how different that feels in your body. And I'm not saying that sometimes there aren't things you should apologize for. Absolutely there are things that you should apologize for. But I love the idea of the reframe and putting it into a place of gratitude rather than a place of sorry. Back to crafting my van. Where do I want to start? Okay, I, so I could start off by showing you these little cup lights. A lot of you have asked me about those in the past videos. Basically, these cup lights are a crafting project. They're little plastic dessert cups from the Dollar Tree. They have beads glued around the top. The lace is attached on the inside of the cup with Mod Podge, and then the trim is glued around them. And then this is just a string of Christmas lights. You take this plastic dessert cup and take a hot glue gun, and then you can also cut some little strings of lace just to give it a little more decor in between the cups. The next thing I can point out is I call these little chandeliers, but basically I just took this trim and glued it to the dome lights that were already in the van. Now when I'm hanging stuff like this up, I typically alternate a glue called E6000 and my glue gun. The E6000 I think holds it better than the glue gun, but the glue gun dries right away. So sometimes I'll put like a little stripe of glue gun and then a spot of the E6000. The glue from the glue gun tends to hold it up until the E6000 dries. So most of the things that I have glued up here like this are a combination of those two glues. Now all the trim that's put up here, Yvonne had already attached this when I bought the van. And I believe she attached most of this with either Fabri-Tac or glue gun. I know those are her two favorites. Now these pieces back here are interesting. That was another crafting project that I did with my friend Yvonne. So basically we took paper plates, cut a circle out of them, and then glued these little pearls and beads onto that and then just put a little trim around it and then put a little beaded trim around the edge here. 
And then I bought this little picture right here. It says, live a great story. And it already had the little dandelions, you know, blowing off in the wind, but I also had to add the little unicorn pin to it. This is two different types of trim here. And again, this is attached with hot glue and E6000 to make these little curtains just kind of close in the cluttery-ness of the nooks right here. And then this area of the van, so Yvonne put the lace up here and she used a spray glue to attach the lace to the headliner that was already in the van. And then I bought this trim. This starfish picture is a photograph that I took when my daughter and I were in the Bahamas and my friend Eddie Tapp printed it and mounted it on a piece of foam core to fit in this little nook right here. So you can see the foam core. And then I just attach little pieces of Velcro right here and here to keep it in place. And hot glued ribbons on there because I think that's pretty. And then these seashells and sand dollars are ones that I found um, at different times on the beach and I just hot glued those up there. So I also made these curtains. When I first did the curtains, I had just bought some sets of blackout curtains and cut them into squares. I used the existing seam that the curtains had on them, but then I also cut them down and used Fabri-Tac and just folded the fabric over with a line of Fabri-Tac in there, you know, for seams that didn't exist already. When I first hung these curtains up here, I had little squares of Velcro instead of these heart-shaped ones, and I kept looking at those thinking, I don't like those. It just looked tacky and ugly, so I ended up cutting out the heart-shaped Velcro pieces and then attaching Velcro here on the curtain. That way I can, you know, pretty much press those up against the window and it blacks it out pretty good. I've been outside of the van checking for light leaks and these blackout curtains do a really good job. In fact, when they're down, I feel like I'm in a little cave in here. Now, as far as attaching the Velcro to the van, I think it's important to use alcohol to clean your surface first. I've learned that. Just I think just because the van gets hot in here, sometimes the Velcro would just fall down. I'd walk in and I'd have, you know, a curtain hanging down. So I ended up taking a staple gun and stapling the Velcro to the plastic uh, part of the door of the van. And of course, you know, the original curtains, they were just these plain little squares. So I went to Hobby Lobby and I found this tassel trim. And what I say now is my tassel game is strong. <laughs> I threaded these ribbons in between the Velcro and the curtain. So I have one on each side. What I learned after I did this particular window is you need to make the back ribbon a little bit longer. The ribbon that I threaded through there is what allows me to raise these curtains. And I like to do that when I'm driving. I, I, um, I think that having good visibility for backing up and maneuvering the van is important. So I just tie them up like that and then lower this blind. Now the little makeup mirror here, it was interesting. It was just like a table mirror. I picked it up at Walmart for nothing, seven or eight bucks and, you know, included some tassels up here, hot glued and used E6000 for the tassels up here and then cut little strips of the bling about I'd say about two inches long and place them around the mirror and hot glued that. I tucked it in the little nook up here between the cubbies and the ceiling of the van, but the mirror kept falling out and took a screw and attached it to the headliner. So that seems to have worked really well. It hasn't fallen down since I did that. This little project was just a shoe box uh, that I had and I covered it with contact paper, hot glued this ribbon on here and I use it uh, to store my drone in. So that was a fun little easy project and it matches my van. It was the perfect size for my drone and it didn't cost very much. So I love to repurpose things when I can. For example, I repurposed, um, I stopped by a Goodwill and I found this little white purse. So I repurposed it. So now it holds my reading glasses and pens and pencils. I like this little bag, this little palm tree smiley face. Again, it's repurposed and just, you know, acts as an extra storage container for me here in the van. The same thing here. This was another Goodwill find and I use it, you know, just to store um, makeup wipes and aspirin and uh, sunscreen. So it acts like a little medicine cabinet almost. Sometimes I also like to attach things with tie wraps. 
So my little chandelier here, it was a Christmas ornament and I attached it through the lace with a tie wrap. And then the chandelier that I have in the cab of the van that's attached to the dome lights, uh, I did the method of alternating hot glue and E6000 to keep that up there. I also wanna show you how I attached the curtain track and I actually had some help with this one. So this is just like hospital curtain track. I took a needle and thread and sewed the blackout curtains onto the little curtain wheels, I guess you call it that. And so when I get ready to close my curtains, I just pull them shut like that. And I attach those, as you can see up here, to the top of the van with little wood screws. So over here, I used a little, just a little cup hook. Let me show you that. So I put a little cup hook right there for my um, curtain sash. I also want to show you my little toilet cover. You can do this a couple of different ways. You can use just like a, a kitchen chair cushion, which is actually just about the right size. This put, And I did that once before, but this particular one is a pillow that I took some of the stuffings out and then cut it down to size. I Velcroed it onto the fabric so I can take the fabric off and toss it in the washing machine. And then I just made, basically it's just a little skirt. I put a little bow on the back of it. Thank you for being here with me today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for all of your beautiful, heartfelt comments. Um, I appreciate it so very much. You keep watching, I'll keep posting content. And remember to like and subscribe and hit that notifications button. Thank you. I also want to say thank you to Kevin, my first Patreon subscriber. I opened that account and never really did anything with it. But if any of you are interested, my Patreon account name is under Becoming Bev.